I wasn't having orgasms from intercourse. I wasn't really having, I mean, like I could have orgasms with my vibrator and yeah, they had vibrators back then. <laughs> I have stories for you. But I wanted orgasms from intercourse. I wanted passionate love making. I wanted hot sex. And the sex was good when we got married or wouldn't have married him. But it waned because I wasn't having orgasms. And it made me begrudge the sex. It made me avoid him. It made me just kind of like not want to be there. Hello, hello. Welcome back to this week's episode of Hotter Than Health, the podcast. Today, we have one of the more entertaining guests and informative guests than we have had in a long time. (laughs) And I'm so excited to introduce you to her. Truly, if you have kids in the car, this is not the episode to listen to. If you actually, that's really the only circumstance. I think everyone needs to hear all of this. (laughs) But before we get into today's episode, I wanted to say thank you for everyone who has subscribed, liked, shared, and supported the podcast. I had a couple of people reach out saying they found us on Spotify and it was a new recommendation or on Apple Podcasts, can't remember, but sent out a few tote bags to new listeners. So if you are interested and you've been supporting and you feel the need to reach out on social media, please do so. It would be great to hear from you. And I also selfishly I love to hear how people are finding the podcast is it through ads is it through organic is it through a friend who's posted about it whatever it is I appreciate it and it helps me a lot this week's episode is definitely going to be a two-parter excuse me we are definitely going to have our guest on again I'm scheduling uh, in the midst of scheduling episode two because when we got into this episode I knew that the audience would want tips and tricks and tangible takeaway items, but there was so much to our guest's backstory that we didn't get that I want to dive more into and I want to get more into how she's transitioned into her lifestyle and what the ins and outs of those conversations looked like. Without further ado, let me introduce to you Susan Bratton. So our guest today, Susan Bratton, is an intimacy expert to millions. She teaches people to how, to, how to achieve ageless passion and unlock the secrets to lifelong vitality. So she's a best-selling author. She's published 34 books and programs, and she's actually writing her newest one, which we talk about on the book. Uh, she has Sexual Soulmates, Revive Her Drive, Ravish Him, Steamy Sex Ed, The Passion Patch, Hot to Trot, Hormone Balancing, so many different books, and she's been featured in New York Times Best Selling. She's on CNBC, The Today Show. She's made appearances on the ABC Network, CBC, or I'm sorry, CBS, The CW, Fox, and NBC. This is one of my favorite episodes because we have someone who has lived what feels like so many lives. We talk about orgasms. We talk about not just masturbation and some of the tips and tricks, but also her journey through going through a period of her, of her life where she thought, okay, this is just what sex is. I'm not going to have an orgasm. I'm not going to necessarily enjoy it. This is just the way that it is. Not because anything was necessarily wrong with her body, but because there was a disconnect between her and her partner and we get into that but I'm so excited to have someone as raw and open and honest and when we finally did have this podcast episode I got on the call with Susan and she immediately was this hot goddess she calls herself a blonde beast she's like a dominant stunning glowing archetype of a strong woman and I think that just by listening to this episode you will know what I'm talking about again if you have if you have children in the car I would recommend either playing an old episode listening to that again uh, catch up with the girlfriend on the phone maybe just turn the radio on but come back to this episode because you will want the tips and tricks. And honestly, it's just nice to hear a woman speak the way that she's speaking, which is erotic and it's devilish and it's intense and it's passionate. And also, dad, if you're listening, this is not the episode for you. Please listen next week. That would be phenomenal. Without further ado, 
I am so excited to bring to you today's guest, Susan Bratton. Welcome to the Hotter Than Health podcast. Susan, thank you so much for being on the podcast. I'm already so excited to have a conversation with you. (laughs) Me too. I love your whole concept, Eliza. Um, And of course, I've been crawling your Instagram page. And I think we are such kindred spirits in so many ways. I forgot to ask how old you are. How old are you? How old does it look? How old do you think I am? Oh, God, I have no idea. I mean, who knows? I'm 30. 30. Oh, that's a, oh, it's a great age. It's, it's like you're age. old enough to know a lot. You still have great energy. It's like such a, the next, I mean, the next 10 years are such a nexus of your life. Um, I'm 62. I just will turn 62 next week. Bullshit. So, yeah, yeah. 62. You are I look, a fox. Look at my guns. An absolute fox. This is what I'm working on right here. Yeah, you I mentioned call earlier. I the blonde barbarian. <laughs> I literally carry all my groceries in at once. Like I want, I'm like a big blonde beast. That's what I'm into. As a matter of fact, before we started the podcast, I was telling Eliza that I have my feet up on my desk. I was like, is this video? Cause I need to take my feet up. Cause I just did the ARX machine and um, I pushed so hard that I pulled, I pulled my back a little oh, bit. Oh no. <laughs> I really think in all honesty that Everything in life, all of your joy, all of your energy, all of your hot sex, all of your brain power starts with a foundation of strength and mobility Mm -hmm. and fantastic nutrition. Mm. Like if you don't have that, like just go back. Yeah. Start there and well, we then think, don't listen to anything else till you get that shit dialed in. We think about our basic human needs, shelter, yeah. water, yeah. food, and yeah. human connection. And yeah. the fact that we pay d- quadruple the amount that we should in rent or mortgages or whatever, yeah. and we're okay with that. And then we have these lackluster relationships and we're okay with that. But then we, it, well, but you, but we see it happen all the yeah. time yeah. and we're like, oh, well, that's just the way it is. Like you can always work on these things. The same way you can change what's in your refrigerator today yeah. is the same way you can change how you communicate with someone today. So Preach. when we all know, okay, you are a sex expert and I, I know that's such a general, mm-hmm. it's, it seems like such a broad title. Tell mm-hmm. us how you got to be here yes. right now. Yeah. Yeah. So 42 years old, I had two gin martinis on my 11th anniversary. And I said <laughs> to my husband, you know, gin martinis are like my truth serum. One is good. I should never have two because then I just say the shit. <laughs> and I said to my husband of 11 years, um, you know, this is just like, we're not, it's not good. It's mm. not good. And we have to figure it out. We have to unwind this. We're on a bad trajectory. And if you just go forward to like, okay, what was it? What, what, what was it really? It was that number one, I wasn't having orgasms from intercourse. I wasn't really having, I mean, like I could have orgasms with my vibrator and yeah, they had vibrators back then. (laughs) I have stories for you. I have stories for you. But I wanted orgasms from intercourse. I wanted passionate lovemaking. I wanted hot sex. And the sex was good when we got married or wouldn't have married him. But it waned because I wasn't having orgasms. Yeah, And it made me begrudge the sex. It made me avoid him. It made me just kind of like not want to be there. Plus I had had trauma when I was a kid. My stepfather sexually abused me, beat me. My stepmother was horrible to me. I had a lot of insecurities in my childhood. Mm. And so we decided to do something about it because what happened when I didn't want to have sex with my husband was he checked out emotionally. Sure. And he started having an affair with a married woman whose husband didn't have sex with her so that he could cope essentially and stay in the relationship because we had this beautiful, I just had lunch with my 26 year old daughter. She was six at the time. This was 20 years ago. And cause it was, well, I was 42 and now I'm 62. So it was literally 20 years ago that I was going through this. So we decided to do something about it. And we went down three tracks 
to see what would fix it. Number one thing I did was I went to therapy and so did he. Um, and so we went together and I really had to come to completion around my traumas and stop dissociating during sex and learn how to be present and feel in my body. The second thing that I had to do, and, and that the, the trick to that was compassion. It was literally getting to a level of a meta mind where I could look at my situation and go, my stepfather was more fucked up than I am from his fuckery. Am I allowed to say the F word on your show? Yes, you're allowed to say the F word. <laughs> okay, yes. good. <laughs> you can cuss all you want. Say whatever you want. Say whatever okay, you good, want. Okay, good, because apparently today I want to. Um, and once you get to the compassion of realizing that your transgressor is more fucked up than you are, mm. You know, because I was still, I knew it was wrong, even though it had happened to me. So I could forgive him and move on. But I'm a fast, I'm a fast emotional processor. And I realized that there are about 20% of people in the world who are very, 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 very slow emotional processors. And I think it's genetics. Mm. And I think it's genetics where there's certain ways that certain bodies process serotonin and dopamine, where every time they think of the thing that happened to them, it's like a fresh bleeding wound. Yeah. It isn't for me. So I, I don't want to belittle people who struggle more than I did. I got help and it worked. That's very self-aware. Yeah. I get that. So you got, you're on your own journey, but get on the journey, right? The second thing was we did a lot of personal development work and we did a lot of like Tony Robbins. I went on later to become the CMO of one of his companies. I really learned a lot. We learned a lot from working with Tony and doing all the date with destiny and the walking on fire, yes. unleashing the power within like that shit's good. Go do personal growth because actually your sexual growth and personal growth are two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. As you mature, you can get better in bed, you can learn more skills, you can be more confident in yourself, you can be more comfortable in your body, you can learn new neural pathways. I really want to talk about orgasmic cross training today because I'm really big on that. Oh my God, please jump whenever you want to jump in. Just Exactly. Go. So that was the second path. So first path was first path was therapy, second path was personal growth. Like just and the third thing we did was we got really, really honest with each other. We read Brad Blanton's book called Radical Honesty and said, all right, let's just tell the truth. Let's just like, I'll tell you that when you put your penis in me, it brings my energy down. Like it actually oh. makes me get less turned on by the time you penetrate me. Because I was penetrated without request. Mm. The penetration was very difficult for me. Even today, one of the things I realized like, I'm going to say two months ago with my husband was that I've been practicing cowgirl style sex woman on top mm -hmm. for the last few years. And my cowgirl is getting so strong, as strong we need all as, the tips as I'm going to tell you, and as strong as the, the slabs of meat on my thighs from <laughs> working out, I am like the barbarian has slabs of thigh meat. I can <laughs> really ride a dick. So, right? I mean, you know, if you yes. ride a dick, you got to have some quad. You also, yes, you have to have the stamina and men don't understand. They're like, why don't you like squat and do the froggy thing on me? I'm like, uh, honestly, the yeah. endurance is, it, there is nothing that a man can do that can compare to the endurance of that, of a woman when they're doing that. Yeah, I, can I truly that. believe it. And, and I love it. Dad, turn this off. Just turn it off. Dad, right. Dad, it off. This is not the show for you. No. He listens to every Eli episode. Eli's this is just not the one. This is not the one for you. <laughs> so radical, radical honesty. And, you know, when you start telling the truth, it, you have to break a lot of bad habits. We lie, we withhold, we walk on eggshells. We, you know, we just like let things go. We didn't, we didn't do it. We stopped doing all that shit. We unwound all of our bullshit and started telling each other the truth. And it is so freeing that literally I have no relationships left in my life where I can't just be 100% myself exactly who I am and just tell my truth not interested in having to adjust for someone's lack of ability to handle the truth yes so that was huge 
And then we went to some sex workshops. We did orgasmic meditation. We did hum sex, love, and intimacy with the Human Awareness Institute. We did um, tantra workshops. We did all the, and we started one of these workshops and like within a matter of, it felt like seconds, learning a few skills helped me cross the gasm chasm, close the orgasm gap. And I started having orgasms from intercourse. God love me. And I have so a question. One, yes, go I ahead. I have a question. When you all, when you and your husband first got married, first started dating, obviously the sex life was fantastic and new and new novel and fresh. Energy. Yes. Yeah. And so there's, there's also this almost unsustainable chemistry that is in the beginning and yeah. that's the case same with any type of relationship job yeah. money new car whatever it is it's just always is the case yeah. but you were having regular regularly having orgasms from sex at that point were you as soon as we started learning what to do I started to be able to have orgasms from intercourse for decade prior for 12 years prior I had never had an orgasm from intercourse okay and then we literally we learned how to do it and I started doing it Okay. What were some of the things that you learned? And also yeah. this is obviously things you can't just like plug in right away. There has to be that mindfulness aspect of it. But what were some of the things that you learned that you took home? The biggest thing I learned was that we started doing an orgasmic meditation practice, which is basically a yoni massage. Do you know what a yoni is? A vagina, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. So let's go through a little bit of semantics around the female genitalia. Yes super simple. Um, the vagina is just the little inside part where your period blood comes out, the baby comes out and the penis or toy goes in or fingers or whatever go in. Um, the vulva is the outer area. Um, and so I like to be more specific than even those things, because I like to have a word that means all of it yes all the erectile tissue the groin the labia the you know like everything the entire area and so the all of the stuff so what i like to use is the word yoni y-o-n-i which is a tantric it's a sanskrit word for the female genital pleasure system ah I want okay. you to think about your vulva and vagina and clitoral, urethral, perineal structures, labia, majora, menorah, mons, foreshad, clitoral hood, and so all the stuff, right? All those parts as a system. Mm -hmm. Because I want you to now think about how you activate a system. So like when you're working out and you're doing a bicep curl, you are activating the bi, you're activating the tri, you're activating the shoulder muscle, you're, you're activating the muscles in your hands, you're um, activating the forearm muscles, you're doing, you're like, everything is recruiting in the lift of that weight as you lift it with your arm. When you have an orgasm, if you just, if I just tried to lift the weight with just my bicep, it would not really be a strong lift. That's what you want to think about when you think about your yoni. You want to think about, okay, I need to engorge, as in bring blood flow into my clitoral, urethral, and perineal erectile tissue systems. Because those three, if I put them on a scale, if I took all those three erectile tissues out and I put them on a scale, and then I took a penis and I peeled it like a banana and took the erectile tissue out of the penis. And by the way, half of the penis sticks out, half of it sticks in. So double what you're thinking when you think about a dick. Peel it like a banana, stick it on the other side of the scale. They weigh the same. We have a dick in our pants. That is we wild. ladies have a dick in our pants. Well, I have a question about that because mm -hmm. I don't think that men really understand that women really, I mean, women and men are the same. I feel like men, mm -hmm. it, they're like a, they're like an air fryer where they can get, they can uh, cook it up real fast. Whereas yeah, women yeah. are more like the oven and they right. take a little bit longer. I mean, sometimes, maybe not always, yeah. but I'm always like instant pot crock pot, but yeah, I got you. <laughs> but like different strokes for different folks and neither are right yeah. or wrong, but some people just take a little while to get into it. And I think that some, there are some guys out there or, or some partners who might get frustrated. Oh, why aren't we on the same trajectory? Or it, it feels like there's a rush. Do you know what I'm saying? 
a hundred and ten percent because he's already horny he masturbates every day he has to top off his semen he gets a rush of testosterone his dick has hemodynamics that get hard really really fast Mm -hmm. we on the other hand don't have the same level of testosterone we seldom masturbate on a daily basis we're not constantly thinking about things we don't get an instant erection when we look at a boob it takes us (laughs) 20 minutes of consistent arousal and stimulation to get the three erectile tissues that make up our banana mm-hmm. that are wrapped around our vagina it's like it, it takes just takes us, us a while to get hard all women and here's what women do so men because they're testosterone dominant they're like well i guess you know i guess she just isn't the kind of person who can you know have orgasms for intercourse and, yeah and so she goes well i guess i'm not When in reality, right, we women always think we're not as good as we are. Men always think they're better than they are. It's testosterone versus estrogen. And it's friggin' true. You laugh, but it's true. true. No, it's It's so true. true. It's so true. It's so true. In everything. And, and, you know, it's like women, we get, I'm sorry, in the past, I know that Mm -hmm. women have been able to say that they've had this experience or heard about this experience. And we all want to get away from it. But when that, when you're in that physical intimate moment and you're, you're mm-hmm. self-conscious about like a role or the way that your arms look when they're yeah. turned and or like, Oh, your boobs are flopped to the side yeah. or something like yeah. that. And yeah. your partner does not give one 19th of a fuck about that right. at all. Rose they do testosterone not care. is rose colored goggles. He doesn't see it. Yes. As a matter of fact, he likes all the squishy, squishy stuff. <laughs> That's true. And That's true. estrogen makes us, it's the molecule of protection because we're the prey and the masculine is the predator. And estrogen we, is the hormone of protection. We, yes. And that's why we're so judgy. That's why we're so hard on ourselves. That's where the body image issues come. So sex is a mindfulness practice. You have to keep bringing yourself back to the pleasure and heart connection. Mm. You have to train your, if you're with a male body partner, you have to train them to slow down. You know, thank God for boyfriend training programs where they will do what we tell them if yeah. we tell them, but we have to tell them because they're dumb shits and they don't know and they don't live in our but like body. telling them over them, and over. <laughs> yeah. You have to be very patient because they're like two year olds and they're resistant because they already think they know everything. You actually have to make it so that they think they thought of it so that it makes it easier and they don't resist it or their ego doesn't like negate it who I think it was I'm gonna totally butcher who this was maybe it was Mark Twain but it was it's easier to fool a man than convince him he's been fooled it's that's really all it is if they think that it's there right it's like you can tell them a million times but if they hear it from the guy in the Lowe's parking lot they believe them I'm like I've been telling you this for 20 years okay yeah in that same vein yeah when we're talking about Let's talk. Let's say in whatever kind of partnership you're in, uh, mm-hmm. if you are in a partnership with a male-bodied partner, what yeah. what are some what are some ways? Because I I saw this on here and I wanted to get into it. Men who want to yeah. learn seduction techniques that have integrity, yeah. whether this yeah. is when you're dating, because there mm-hmm. are a lot of guys who get overtly sexual on a first, second, third date, and it pushes women right. away. And they mm-hmm. think, oh, well, this is just how to turn women on. What are some more delicate or suave or approachable ways to ter- seduce a woman or a partner? Yeah. Yep. So there's one simple trick, which is really, really helpful. It's in a book that I published. So I'm a publisher of passionate lovemaking techniques. I publish the work of my myself and other people whose expertise I think is really chef's kiss shit. And I've been doing it for decades. So um, I, pu- I primarily pu- publish orgasm techniques, seduction skills, and things that teach men how to slow down, be present, connect their cock to their heart, and move their woman toward more pleasure. I'm an equal opportunity person. I believe in gender spectrum expression. I just talk about male and female as the equipment they were born with XX, XY chromosomes. So I really want to clear that up too, because yeah. I have a girlfriend and I have a boyfriend and I have a husband. So I am a, I feel like I'm a non-binary flu, gender fluid human being. 
we have an, um, we got to schedule a part two uh, right away. So go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Sure. I'm happy to come back anytime. That's no problem. I, I enjoy doing this, as you know, because it's, it's communication and connection, which is what I love. So the technique for men is something that is called the four keys to seduction. And the four keys to seduction, the first of the four keys, and you can get this at seductiontrilogy.com. There's a free book. It's called More Sex More Often, and it explains it in more detail. I'll put that and, in the show notes for people. Yeah, More Sex More Often. It's really written for men, but I always think as a woman, you read the thing and you teach the guy how to do it, and then he does it. And it's basically the notion, this first of the four keys to seduction with integrity is making her small offers. Again, because he's already horny, he's already got a heart on, he's already ready to go. He's trying to get inside us as fast as he can. And it's not that we're opposed to him getting inside us. We want that as much as he does. We just need it to be when we're like super turned on and ready because one of the things that ha- one of the sad things that happened in the history of our culture is that religion said sex is for pro- procreation only and so sex became intercourse and so that negated kissing massage full body touch um breast pleasuring kissing your neck stroking your hair rubbing your feet pleasuring your yoni with your fingers and your mouth playing with you with toys like the full body experience all of the things that we need to get the urethral clitoral and perineal structures that are the dick in our pants full of blood so we have an erection so that when we are penetrated it gives us orgasms so we have spent our lives being penetrated too fast because people are doing oh sorry honey i i didn't mean to have my phone on i apologize no, okay. um i was uh, waiting for a call earlier um because we have been penetrated too fast in you know for pretty much every time we've ever had intercourse we've been penetrated too fast and so we've struggled to come because we don't have our full erection when you're fully erect with those three erectile tissue structures from all the what's called foreplay but i think it should all be called sex um when we get all of that then it gets all plumped up and then the 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 penetration stimulates all the tissue wrapped around the vagina yeah also and i'm going to go back to what that what that seduction thing is but i'll finish off on this because this is really important too our vaginas are not an inside out penis they're not they're not a shaft they're called a canal but it's not like a tube it's actually looks like a balloon it's got a little a little neck and then it gets bulbous and it actually tents when we get aroused our uterus pulls up and it gets even bigger and it's not the friction going in and out that really feels that good to us it's actually the penis touching all the entire parts of the inside of that cave the g-spots on the top the perineal sponges on the bottom the uterus comes down and the cervix puts a little depression in the balloon in the back there but there's room in the back there the pudendal nerves go along the sides down our legs they love to be touched inside there and so the number one thing that i say to guys is stop thinking about "Er, er, 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 er," and start thinking that when you go in there you're like probing everything it all wants to be touched with your fingers with toys with your penis that's why you really want to get all that activated yeah that's why the uh the like come hither motion has been such a phenomenon I feel like even in the past few years because there's finally a a word and a way to make it playful feeling or seeming and that is something that I don't think people understand they really do think that it's like in and out they look at the eggplant and the donut and they're just like oh it's in and out and that's great for the guy I'm sure they're they're not going to complain either way but yeah but it really is about the when you hear about having sex even missionary and then you know you you picture anatomically what's happening but if the guy just tilts his hips and tucks his hips at the top yes then there's there is a huge difference a massive difference in the way that it feels for the woman because it actually feels like something (laughs) like it feels like something 
Yes. We don't really like the friction at our introidal sphincter right at the entrance. That's too much for us. We don't like all that friction. Yeah. Uh, my, my 44th book I'm writing right now is called Orgasmic Intercourse. And I, I have about 30 different intercourse techniques. Um, I have the heart tongue technique, glissando. I've got so many techniques. If you go Can you give to, us a couple? I'll tell you what, because you want to cover so much ground. I'll just tell you where to go to get them. Yes. Great. If you, if you go to my main website where I publish all, so I have a sex tips newsletter. You can get on it at betterlover.com. And this is what I do is I send out these things, like all these techniques all the time for free. You can buy my stuff. You don't have to, it doesn't matter to me. I'm always giving away things because I just love to teach people stuff. Mm -hmm. So you can get on there at betterlover.com, but I, all the emails that go out, they get housed at personallifemedia.com. And if you go into personallifemedia.com and you go up to the top of the search bar and you write, come with me, you'll get all the orgasmic intercourse techniques that I'm turning into my next book. Awesome. Awesome. So that's where you get them. Come with me at personallifemedia.com. So Love to hear let it. me go back to the seduction technique. Small offers. What happens is that men are already way ahead of us. So the number one technique I tell guys when I'm on the men's shows is turn around and come back and get us. You're way ahead of us. Slow down, turn around, connect your heart, drop into presence. Stop being performance oriented. Stop trying to make us come. We will come. The comes are in us. They're going to come out. Let them come out. Stop rushing us. And they find that very helpful. Um, and what I teach them is make her a lot of small offers. Run her a menu of small offers. And that's what that book is at moresex.com, moresexmoreoften.com. That book teaches guys how to make small offers. Would you like to have your back rubbed with some THC cream? Would you like a foot rub? Would you like to have a make out? Would you like me to play with your boobs while I stro well, while you stroke my cock? What kind of music would you like to have on? Do you want the windows open more? Is How do you like this stack of towels? We need to put down the fascinator so we don't get the bed dirty. Are you ready to do that now? Like we want a running commentary of all of those things that so we can say where we are and what sounds good. And when you start running a woman a menu, she'll say, yeah, rub, rub my back, but only for five minutes because I definitely can't wait to have a make out. But yeah, get this crick out of my back right now for me. And then I want to lie side by side facing each other propped up on the pillows. I want to use my new Foria lube on your cock. I want to stroke you while you're playing with my boobs. And please do that thing you were doing before where you were squeezing up really high at the top. And when you were kissing me, you were kissing down my neck. I really liked that whole thing where you were like activating my chest and my neck, not just kissing my lips and playing with my nipples. So can you do that? Yes, I can. Okay. Lie down. I'm going to do the back first. Right. And like, it's, it's like, honestly, it's, it's addressing all of the things that women are thinking, but the, we're almost, we just don't want to bring up like, oh, well, I know that the dishwasher's running and there's a ton of dirty dishes in there. And if I think about that the entire time, da, 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 it's like, okay, if the guy actually knows that maybe he's like, Hey, after this, I'm going to go clean up or after this, right. what, just address it. It doesn't have to be yeah. perfect, but address yeah. it. And that's all of it. It's really just, you want to be heard. Men want to be heard. Women. Yeah. Uh, partners want to be heard. Yeah. Before I know that I have to get you out of here at a certain time. So I want to make sure that we address yeah, a couple of things. I, like I could go for 10,000 hours with you. No, I promise I'll come back. Uh, we will absolutely have to have you back. You're yeah, delightful. With, no problem. With this being a nutrition podcast. Yes. Uh, talk to me about aphrodisiacs. Talk to mm -hmm. me about foods that are yeses, foods that are no. Obviously, I'm thinking like beans and queso might not be fabulous, but what are some, like, what did you have for lunch today if you know you're planning on having hot bang and sex tonight? Yeah. Uh, I just ate um, a chicken breast that I had shredded. I usually eat the thighs, but they were gone. So I had a shredded chicken breast with um, really good salt and pepper on it, mold and salt and compat pepper, which is from Cambodia, and it's really good. And then I make my own salad dressing. I call it Viagrette, the undressing dressing, because Ooh. it's made with <laughs> organic avocado oil, 
I like sherry vinegar. It has um, Dijon mustard, mm. the salt and the pepper that I like, and uh, savory, dried savory, which is a lovely little herb that is an unsung hero of the spice rack. And I just shake it up in a jar and I took a, we have the avocados in California right now yeah. are giant and gorgeous. So my daughter is vegetarian. We just sat outside on the patio. She had chicken, C-H-I-K apostrophe N. <laughs> and I had chicken and we had the avocado and we put the viagrette all over it. We had big chunks of juicy watermelon. And I had, I needed a couple carbs because I worked out two times today. So I had just a very small handful of corn chips. I try to limit my GMOs and mm -hmm. those chips have, you know, they're not good for you, but sure. they taste good and they're so satisfying. I had that. I had a green juice earlier. I usually have a protein smoothie every morning that I make myself from scratch. I make my own nut milk with cashews and cocoa coconut. Um, and I also make my own yogurt with lactobillus ruteri, mm. which is um, the bacteria in your gut that helps you generate oxytocin. So uh, if you are a low oxytocin producer, it really helps you generate oxytocin. And when you generate oxytocin, you not only feel closer to your friends and family, you're annoyed by everyone less. And in America today, we all should be eating that lactobillus ruteri yogurt because we I'm need frankly that. pissed off with about 28% of our country. <laughs> so <laughs> truly, that sounds divine. And it also sounds like you're a big advocate for healthy fats and high protein. Yeah. And yeah, I also yes. know you work and out veggies. Time, that helps. and veggies, veggies. I eat a lot of organic vegetables. Yeah. And I've learned how to cook them well. Mm. My, one of the things that I do to love more, cause I'm always wanting to, I always wanted to be in my loving heart all the time. Like that's just the place I want to live 24 seven. I love to feed people mm. super nourishing food where they're like, Oh my God, this tastes so god so i'm always feeding always it's, it's such a pleasurable experience to have food that you know is made with love and then yeah. served with love and then consumed with love it's agreed full love language is there anything that you think of when you think okay well i have been struggling to get hard i've been struggling to have any type of blood flow down there what's going on what type of yeah. foods would you say to remove before i let you go well, you really want to get rid of any kind of seed oils, fried foods, processed foods, any kind of breads, cakes, cookies, candies, um, all the all the sugars. Um, so going back to just um, high quality organic vegetables, really good organic fresh fruits in season, and then quality, you know, pa grass fed, pasture raised meats and sustainable seafoods if you eat them if not um it's more it's a challenge it's vegetarianism is a challenge mm -hmm. um i am a meat eater um so avocado oil coconut oil olive oil are very good ghee is really good grass-fed ghee is really good um yes. those are the things that i generally use i eat a lot of nuts and seeds myself because i make that nut milk mm -hmm. myself for my my smoothie and things like that so i do get a lot of nuts um, because what happens is that if you have a lot of um, shitty fats that you eat, you know, processed foods and fried foods and stuff like that, it's going to uh, put fat into your arteries and then the calcium in your body is going to calcify it and make it hard and brittle. Mm -hmm. And then the way your vascular system works, it uses muscle tone and the muscles have to, you don't have enough blood to be everywhere in your body all at one time. So your, your vascular system squeezes it to your brain when you're thinking, to your heart, your glutes, when you're working out, and to your genitals when you're in an arousal state. Mm. And it can't get there and it can't fully fill up all the balloon-like tissue that when when your clitoris gets basically a lady boner, as an example, 
listen to this podcast, you know that every single morning I have some type of protein or fat in my coffee and recently over the past few months every single morning I am using the Organifi collagen. It's an unflavored collagen sourced from real food ingredients which are pasture-raised cows, wild-caught fish, eggshell membranes, and organic bone broth protein. This is going to help replenish and rebuild the body's most abundant protein and enjoy the benefits of radiant skin, hair, and strong nails. You all know that I add some type of protein into my coffee because it also helps me to not be crashing and craving throughout the day. I find that if I don't add something like this to my coffee, then I'm always craving more than one cup. And that's just not how I jive. More than one cup of coffee helps. It, it keeps me up at night and I don't want to deal with that. So having the one that is really high quality and has an abundance of different good things in my good things in it for my body. I love that this has four real food ingredients. There's five types of collagen. It's unsweetened, no flavors, no monk, no GMO. It is glyphosate residue free, pasture raised, and 20 grams of collagen per two scoops. Truly, you can't get more simplistic than this. I love it. And you know that I've been on a lifestyle shift of introducing some types of animal products, such as the bone broth. And that's something that I'm very excited about. And my gut is as well, I can tell. If you want to try this in your coffee, in your smoothie, in your water, in your yogurt, whatever you want to try it in, you can use the code Organifi. I'm sorry. You can use the code HTH at Organifi.com backslash HTH Organifi.com Use the code HTH and you can get 20% off any of these products. You can also check out the link in the show notes to learn more and find a direct link. Again, that is the collagen from Organifi.com backslash HTH. Enjoy. So when you want to get the blood flow to your genitals, what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your clitoral, erectile, and perineal systems full of blood. And that takes about 20 minutes. So you have to give your body the time she needs to get that filled with blood. Because if you don't think about it, if it's tiny, if it's a little tiny thing and you don't have your lady boner, then you have a very small surface area. So when you touch it, it can't send very many signals of pleasure to the brain. Your brain is what processes pleasure. It tells you it feels good. So when it you get that 20 minutes of breast stimulation, kissing, vulva and yoni massage, oral pleasuring, some orgasms from your toys, all that stuff, then all the blood will flow in there and get big, makes it big, give you an erection, just like the, you've got the dick in your pants. You've got to get that big. Then you've got all this surface area, which is amplifying the signals to your brain. Your brain is going, oh, this feels really, really good. I'm going to have a bunch of orgasms. And that's what makes you come. And if you eat crappy stuff, and all those arteries get stiff, you can't get the blood in there. And if you Mm. eat sugar, you get neuropathy. It causes retraction of the nerves. They get dead and you can't feel it. So the sugar and the bad fats are what screw up your pleasure. Mm. And the only things you can do to reverse it are you take nitric oxide supplements or and you eat a lot of leafy green vegetables and beetroot. Mm-hmm. The leafy greens and the beets, they they have they have nitrates in them. Nitrites in them. And the nitrites turn into nitrates through the little bacteria that live in your tongue. And then that turns into nitric oxide through the stomach acid in your gut. And then that is the gaseous signaling molecule that squeezes the blood into your yoni or your, into your lingam is the Sanskrit Sanskrit word for penis. Mm. The yoni and the lingam, they're nice words. They're better than dick and pussy or cock and whatever. Yeah. You know? yeah. I like yoni and lingam. They're pretty words. They're nice. And so 
they are nice. They're reverential. They're, they have a spirituality to them. They have a history, a legacy of pleasure that mm-hmm. you bring with them when you use those words. As And they are the system, not just the little thing. Yeah. You know? So like that. So most important is watch the fats that you eat. Watch the sugar that you eat. Eat the vegetables and the beetroot and uh, work out. You got to get, you got to get your blood moving. Absolutely. You you know, it's not just about the food. It's also about the mood. Yes. And also not for nothing, but the, the endorphins that you get from working out, it Mm. makes everything, it makes your day more pleasurable. And then you, you have more energy at the end of the day. If you become a morning workout person, then likely by the end of the day, you will not be crashing and you will feel uh, uh, more aligned with your circadian rhythm, meaning, okay, yeah. the bed is not meant for TV tonight. Like it's actually meant for pleasure. It's meant for fun. It's <laughs> meant for ease. I love that so much. I yeah. saw the cutest Yoda meme, baby Yoda meme. Can I tell you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I love baby Yoda memes so much. And there was one that was, um, you, when you spend an hour looking for the perfect show to watch and you're asleep in 10 minutes. <laughs> that's that is absolutely every single day that is my life <laughs> and I, I don't even want to watch tv I just sometimes sometimes I like to have it on but like I don't know what I'm watching I'm not paying attention I'm not focused and if I if I try and focus I'm unconscious I'll fall asleep in five minutes I agree <laughs> well you are hilarious and so informative <laughs> and Good. so vivacious I cannot wait to have you on again to talk more <laughs> about tips and and positions and how to communicate with your partner. Oh, I love positions. Before we leave, Mm -hmm. give us, give us your, what position have you been favoring lately in to, and then what have, what have you been loving to give lately? Yeah. Okay, good. So I wanted to tell you one more thing. I want to close an open loop we left open and all your listeners are going to be like, Oh, so um, <laughs> we, I mentioned orgasmic cross training, and I want to say that, and then I, and then I'll do positions and what I've been loving to do. So you've got to activate your vulva. You've got to. It's not just about the tip of the clitoris. It's about getting the shaft popping, getting the mounds activated, so all the blood can flow in, so you can ejaculate and have ejaculatory orgasms really nicely. You've got to get the outer labia activated, the inner labia activated, the vestibule activated, the vaginal canal and the cave activated, and all the tissue in there. And so um, basically what I recommend are that you have a pleasure chest in your bedside table with eight, the eight types of toys that activate the different areas of the vulva. There's four for men for the male body and there's eight for the female body. And they're basically, there. there's a liquor, there's a, a simulator, there's a rabbity style thing, there's a G-spot wand, there's a kind of like a, a dildo thing, there's three more, I can't remember what they are because I'm in a hurry to get all this done for you. But if you go to orgasmiccrosstraining.com, I listed them all. And I've got the best ones for each thing. Just start with one, add another, add another, so that you can come from all those different toys so that when you're with a partner, you can not only incorporate the toys into pre, during, and after intercourse, but you can have a lot more activated sensation so that everything you do with a human being feels better. You're not going to wear out your clit. You're not going to mess yourself up. You're literally going to improve your orgasmic response and intensity and ability to have orgasms in many different ways from many different types of stimulation by doing the cross training. So my answer to the it's amazing favorite, right? I That's mean, amazing. duh, like because I think buys and tries and quads and glutes and, you know, like we're well, doing it all. We're activating everything. Well, we think I, I mean, I think a lot of times we hear, oh, well, if you're not having orgasms from having sex, then don't 
don't use your vibrator for a little while so that you don't get desensitized to it. And I'm like, but then we, but then we hear other things that it's like, well, get to know your body more, masturbate more. And it's, I'm also thinking, okay, correct side. Yes. And, but I like what you're saying about it, not just being one type. Cause I do think that it's, if you get too comfortable with one kind, then of course Mm -hmm. the response is going to be, and Mm -hmm. uh, your mindset thinking, oh, well, I can only get off from this way. But I like Mm -hmm. that you're saying training different parts and you're training your mind to understand and accept. Yes, I can in multiple different ways. Such yeah, a good your perspective. Brain, it activates your brain. Dr. Nan Rice put all these women in an fMRI and looked at where their brain lit up based on where you touch, and your brain lights up in all different places depending on where it's touched. At. Light that shit up, Eliza. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> This is the, I'm in my uh, single girl days right now. So this is a really interesting conversation to be having right now. Get all eight of them. So here's what I did yesterday that I really, really liked. That was really fun. Um, One, so I have herpes Mm -hmm. and I, I get it very rarely, but I get it when something pisses me off and I got pissed off and I don't get pissed off very often either. Something pissed me off. I didn't like the way it was handled by a particular person in a particular way. And it made me really mad. And I had a herpes outbreak. So I couldn't have intercourse. And so yesterday, my boyfriend and I, one of the things that I wanted to do was I wanted to have one of my vibrators inside my vagina while I used my new favorite wand. It's called the Vim. It, um, it's on that list at Orgasmic Cross Training, the wand. That's another one on my clitoral structures. So I was wanding the outside while I had the vibrator internally. Oh. And he was kissing me and playing with my boobs. I mean, it sounds like a win-win for both people. And he's like getting the best show of all time. It, he loves hearing me come. That's one of his very favorite things is hearing me come. It's he the, loves the auditory. Can we give a tip for men? And uh, this is not yeah. this is not saying, oh, I know all about men, but men speak up. Don't be silent during sex. Silent sex I is, th- I, and I don't know if they're just so up in their head that they don't even think yeah. about it, but I'm like, yeah, breathe heavy for a second. Tell me, give me yeah. some feedback. Tell yeah. me, like, just describe what's going on or mm-hmm. uh, absolutely anything. The silence yeah. is it, it, truly, I will be the Sahara. It is not, not, it's not the way to go. You speak I up agree. just a little bit. And it's a learned skill. So Mm -hmm. I used to be pretty silent in the bedroom until I had a boyfriend who was hard of hearing in one ear and I never (laughs) knew which I never knew which ear it was. Oh my god, that's so funny. I was gonna have to be noisy the whole time. And I had to be pretty loud because he really couldn't hear. And so once I started, it became so easy to be loud. It became so easy to just start going yeah. loud 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 and he loved it so much and but I said hey what about you turnabout's fair play I want to hear you and he is a noisy lover and I I mean and what's interesting is that his orgasms now are like guttural neanderthal yes explosion where he's just like screaming in pleasure and I know for sure <laughs> that he's having the best orgasms of his life. And a part of it is because I encouraged him to be loud, which adds to his pleasure. He, it's not just about the physical act. It's about the lighting. Is there music? Yeah. Is there smells happening? Yes. Is there noises? It, we need to, exactly. I completely agree. Let's make the this. lover space. Yes. Let's just make it a fun experience. And of course there's going to be mm-hmm. times where it's quick and th- those things happen, but when you have the chance, clickies. but when you have the chance and you, it, well, then maybe it's just a BJ, it, whatever it is. Right. But exactly. But I'm like, let's actually take a moment. I feel like everything in this world is so fast. Everything mm-hmm. moves so fast. Instant gratification. Yeah. We have 10 second videos. Even our conversation is fast because we're on a schedule, but yeah, if we can set aside 40 minutes, yeah. th- 30 minutes, 
then no, come on. You know what? I'm, I'm, but I'm saying if we're starting somewhere, we're starting somewhere. <laughs> You're like three hours. Set minimum. the bar a little higher, please. Yeah. Okay. Well, like, what if, are we doing tonight? We're making love. We're eating a nutritious meal and we're making love. That's what we're doing. It's candlelight. Uh, there's romantic music. I love it. My I have, and there's ice cream afterward. <laughs> and there's we've got pistachio ice cream for afterwards, and that is exactly That's the way my it favorite. is. Favorite. I was just in Italy and I'm like, I can't get it out of my head. And I, when so I tell good. you that the the men in Italy are so calm and romantic and sensual mm. and they're just taking my food order. They're not, it's not mm. anything mm. specific, nice. but they're just, they take their time. Okay. What are the things that you've been loving? What are the things, yeah. what is the position? And then I'll, <laughs> so I'll set you free. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, and my, luckily my call pushed to four, which was good. So oh, thank uh, goodness. that was helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I didn't finish off on what happens if you've lost lubrication, you have incontinence, sex is painful, your boyfriend or husband can't get it up. I didn't do that. And that is start taking nitric oxide supplements, uh, for the masculine there's penis pumps and gains wave, and they work beautifully together. For the feminine, there's the vagina device called a V-Fit and Femiway. They work beautifully together. Um, you can find all of that information at betterlover.com. You just type in your problem and the video answer will come back, come up. So if you're like, what was that thing she said? Mm. Just go to betterlover.com and type in whatever your problem is and it'll come up. Um, because I, what that boyfriend who had that neanderthal orgasm is 66 years old he's hard as a rock he's incredible in bed we do 25 different positions he's got stamina galore different positions. so i'm 62 we're having the best sex of our lives and sex can keep getting better wherever you are now just start with the orgasmic cross training start with asking for what you want start with the slowing down mm -hmm. and just keep learning uh, my favorite sex position is whichever one I'm in the mood for in the moment. I just ask my Yoni what she wants and I find out. I love 69. I love cowgirl. I love doggy. I love missionary. I love off the edge of the bed. Mm -hmm. I love standing up. I love in a chair. My favorite sex position is all the positions <laughs> because... It's really fun to just move around and think about what would feel good next. I love that answer. And that's the thing. We get so stuck in our rut that, mm -hmm. you know, we have our three that work, we, or whatever, however many that work and you stick to that. They but all like, work. You just have to practice. That's a good point. That's a great point. Yeah. But I, why not? Why not? Why not give it a shot? If you're with someone that you're comfortable with and that you are interested in at all then i guess that's the time to really think more of yourself and i think that we don't always have to also we don't always have to know what we want but if there's something that we're not enjoying at that time you can say hey mm -hmm. i can't really figure out what i don't love about this but it doesn't feel yeah. awesome so let's let's adjust yeah. and it, we don't always have to have the answer i think yeah. that's okay to know cuz the yes. only way way you know you find the answer is by experimentation and failure and it's a lab in there. And every day is different, mm -hmm. especially with the female body. Mm -hmm. We're on a cycle even after menopause. And so what felt good yesterday isn't going to feel good today. So you have to listen to your yoni. She's always talking to you. It's not intuition. It's actually felt sense. Mm. And she's always telling you what she wants. Just let her just speak for her on behalf of my yoni. Here's what she's telling me she'd like to have today. It's very similar to boundaries. Boundaries are interesting. People are like, I know I need to express my boundaries. But people don't want to do it because they're afraid they won't be loved. Mm. But I ask you, if you don't tell people exactly what you need to feel fully loved, you'll never know you're fully loved. Mm. It's the same in your sexuality. You don't want to be afraid to say what you need. When you say what you need and your lover knows that they're always going to know exactly where you stand and that you're going to be happy. If Here's the thing about my daughter that I always say. My, my daughter only calls me when there's a problem. And she'll call me and she'll be like, Mom, I'm so sorry. I only call you when there's a problem. I'm like, I don't care. 
call me when there's problems. This is what I'm here for. I don't worry about you. If you're not calling me, I don't worry. I can call you anytime if, I'm, if I want to talk to you. Call me when there's a problem because then I never worry about you. Mm-hmm. If she ain't crying, she ain't dying. That's my catchword for my oh, girl. I like that. 26 years old. It's the same in the bedroom. If she's not saying anything, she's happy. If she needs to tell you what she wants, you adjust. So when she's constantly telling you what she wants, you know you're making her happy. It's Mm. the opposite of what you think. Oh, you're doing it wrong if she's telling you to change. No, she's making you happy by telling you what she wants. It's just a different lens. And and men will get that. They're very, very conditioned to think that if they get feedback, they're doing something wrong because in the masculine world, it's a pecking order. If, 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 if I'm not up, I'm down and they don't want to go down. They don't want to make, they don't want to make mistakes. They don't want to be a failure. They don't want to fail. So what they need to understand is that they're, you're allowing them to fully love you when you have this running commentary that lets them win. I love that. It's like feeding them this goodness plan Uh, yeah it's it's this is the game plan so that we both succeed and when you come at it from an us perspective and it really is they say all the time in marriages and I have no grounds to speak I've never been married but they say if you're in marriage and you become complacent and you're not and you're just letting it you're just pacifying everything that's when i the real problems come up because the more you sweep under the rug the more you're going to trip it's it is what it is yeah this has been so entertaining and i'm so excited i love you i love you you. you're the best amazing person so are you (laughs) i'm gonna schedule with corinne and get you back on the books for a part two so that we can talk more about food (laughs) we can talk more about positions and toys and also just the words the communication behind it but great thank you so much where can everybody find you other than your website Mm -hmm. where are you on social media so people can follow you on instagram yeah uh, it's my name susan bratton s-u-s-a-n b-r-a-t-t-o-n perfect and i'm on threads now too i love threads (laughs) i'm gonna follow you right now actually so fun so i hated twitter so much lately and um i'm loving threads Well, it's easy, it's simple, and it's very user-friendly, but everyone go follow Susan. Have a great day, and thank you so much. You're a goddess. My pleasure. So are you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this week's episode with Susan. I know you absolutely loved her. What a riot. I am so happy to know her now. And soon we'll have her on again, and we will get even more of her juicy tips and stories. But... If you haven't already, make sure you head to Apple Podcasts, rate us five stars, leave us a review. It is the absolute best way for people to start finding the podcast who are interested in wellness, health, sex, health, or all of the above topics. I hope you all have a great rest of your week and we will talk to you next Thursday.